Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like down below, and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please leave me a comment down below as far as to what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another Kurtz Gazette video called The Most Efficient Way to Destroy a Universe, <laughs> False Vacuum. Let's take a look. What if our universe comes with a self-destruct button to eliminate itself so cleanly and efficiently that every single physical thing would just stop existing and life would be impossible forever? The ultimate ecological catastrophe, vacuum decay. To explain how our universe could destroy itself, we need to understand two principles. <laughs> One, energy levels. A core idea in physics is that everything has an energy level. The higher the level, the more energy is in the system. Wood, for example, has a high level. It can be burned, a process that releases the chemical energy stored in its molecular bonds and turns it into heat. The ash left over is at a lower energy level than the wood before. Two, stability. That was a pretty big, um, as quick and dirty version of the second law of thermodynamics. Um, yeah, everything does have a, talking about energy levels and stuff. Um, what it does say is, you know, heat disorder is going to increase and basically everything is going to get less complicated as the universe continues to expand. Hence the whole, you know, talking about ash with wood, or in the case of, like, stars, then it's going to be, like, you know, white dwarfs as opposed to, you know, your big red giants, um, other things that have been around for, for a long, long time. Basically, things have a tendency to want to use up their fuel. This kind of gets into heat death, but let's continue. Everything in our universe tries to move towards its ground state, in which it's completely stable and has as little energy as possible. For example, a ball on a hill is unstable and has a lot of potential energy. When disturbed, it will roll down into the valley and lose its potential energy in the process. The ball is now in its ground state and stable. It will remain. This is actually the same phenomena that um, governs uh, radioactive decay, for instance. Um, atoms or nuclei have more have increased excitation. They give off that energy because they want to reach that stability state. So. Cool. That. Everything in our universe follows these two principles. If something has a lot of energy, it's unstable and wants to get rid of it to become stable and reach its ground state. This is true for every system, even in the weird world of quantum mechanics. If our current understanding of physics is correct, then the universe gets hmm. its properties from quantum fields. We explain them in detail in another video. For this video, imagine them as the rules of the universe. They tell particles how to behave and interact. Like everything in the universe, they want to be in the lowest energy level possible, which is called a vacuum state. This has nothing to do with vacuum in space. It's just called this way because scientists are bad at naming things. <laughs> that is actually a great analogy, kind of like the whole term um, the word critical just means steady state in the sense of nuclear power. However, critical mass means something very different with regards to uh, nuclear weapons as in being able to uh, create that runaway chain reaction. That's a common misconception that I get asked time after time again. <laughs> we think all the fields reached their vacuum state, except maybe one. It's possible that the Higgs field is not stable, but metastable, which is a fancy way of saying that it pretends to be stable, but really is not. It would be a false vacuum. Sort of. <laughs> the Higgs field is responsible for giving particles their mass, which rules how almost everything in the universe interacts. What would happen if the Higgs field is in a false vacuum? Think of our ball in the valley. The ball is the Higgs field. The valley might not be the lowest energy state for the Higgs field. There might be an even deeper valley that it wants to get to. 
This would mean that the Higgs field has a lot of potential energy waiting to be released. The Higgs field could be like a piece of wood, but drenched in gasoline, waiting to set the universe on fire. Mm. A random spark, like quantum tunneling, could release the potential energy. So, quantum tunneling, yes, random spark, indeed. Um, it It's one of those bizarre things that, to simplify, a uh, particle can phase through something as an extremely low probability of happening, but if you got billions and billions and millions of particles, it ha this sort of thing happens eventually with things that are super, super small for uh, things trying to, uh, to move from, from one point to another. Um, not to say you can't phase through the entire Earth and end, end up through the other side, I guess that's technically possible, but we're just dealing with on the order of 10 to the minus 100 probability. But anyway, just just know that it's pretty, pretty un unlikely, especially on a macro scale. ...of the Higgs field. This could happen at any time and without warning. If at any point in space this so-called vacuum decay starts, there is no turning back. As the Higgs field crashes into the lower energy state, it releases a massive amount of potential energy. This energy pushes the space around it over the barrier, which releases more potential energy. A sphere of the new stable Higgs field, or true vacuum, grows at the speed of light in all directions. Imagine it like setting a sea of gasoline, the size of the universe, on fire. The sphere is surrounded by a shell of energy that devours everything it comes into contact with. Whatever it touches is eliminated from existence. The bubble will continue to grow forever, deleting the universe on its way. There is no way to be warned since it's so fast, but there's nothing we can do anyway. Our destruction would be instant. In a fraction of a second, Earth would be gone. But it actually gets worse. <laughs> if the energy level of the Higgs field changes, it changes all of physics. In the true vacuum of the sphere, the standard model will be overthrown, superseded by different physics that we don't know. How fundamental particles behave, how atoms hold together, how <laughs> chemicals react. Vacuum decay won't... Granted, we wouldn't be around to see this, so I guess we can take some solace in that. <laughs> like this, so there's no way to see it coming. If it's already traveling at the speed of light, you know, you, you physically can't see it coming. This was one of those things that's pretty out there, and we're not 100% sure actually is a real thing or not, but it's an interesting idea. <laughs> destroy life. It will destroy chemistry itself, making life as we know it impossible. We simply have no idea what it would be like in sight. It might be a shadow of what it is now, or not. We don't know. If vacuum decay happens, the outlook is indeed grim. If you feel slightly worried now, don't be. At this point, false vacuum is speculation based on our current understanding of particle there you physics, go. Okay. which might be wrong. It's kind of like using a ruler to measure a continent. Sure, you can do it, but you might be off. I've actually heard this analogy before. Maybe someone else got it from Kurt Skazat. No, okay, because I think I may have said this in one of my videos earlier. <laughs> quite a bit at the end. Right now. No one can say if vacuum decay is a thing that's real, or just a scary idea. But even if one or multiple spheres of death have already started expanding, the universe is so big that they might not reach us for billions of years. If they're far enough away, they might not ever be able to reach us because of the expansion of the universe. The speed of light is not that fast on the scale of the universe. So while vacuum decay is fascinatingly scary, right now there are other things we should be more afraid of. In contrast to vacuum decay, we have the power to prepare for most of them. Videos like this one take hundreds <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, didn't really expect them to cover this on this channel, but uh, yeah, this is one of those things that, again, they don't really explain much because there's not really a whole lot that we really know about this sort of thing. I, I remember having heard of... Uh, vacuum decay a while ago and it's still one of those things that it's kind of struggle to wrap my head around granted I didn't go as deeply as some nuclear people go into the whole po 
the whole uh, particle physics side of things. But um, yeah, it's it's one of those uh, it's one of those things that kind of designed to scare people. On the upside, though, you can make it say I don't know, materialize you um, a, a a pile of money or. <laughs> The, per the perfect life partner or something like that have roughly the same amount of probability of actually happening out of nowhere so it all seems very very magical when you get down to the elementary particle level of what things are able to do kind of like like particles being in multiple spots at once the whole quantum tunneling thing which is being able to pass through not sure how it got there you can ask the particle it doesn't know <laughs> Anyway, this sort of stuff's just fascinating and a bit of a head scratcher. Thank you much for thank you yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Uh, see what I mean?